so I think it's trying to rain, which is kind of the perfect opportunity for me to show you around the garden because the sun isn't glaring or you can't see anything I show you. So let's go take a look. Okay. So here is the general layout. Got dogs and junk all back here because, you know, we live here. I'll go over here first and I'll show you our Doug friend. Our Doug friend. We call him Doug and Lady Doug. The friend doves. They are making babies. But here's some real life right here. So this is an arborvitae that used to be alive. As you can see right now, it's not, unfortunately. We had a really um, early hard frost, hard freeze last year in October. And then this year in the spring, we had that really quite late hard frost too. So that equals a lot of winter burn on our arborvitae. You can see a couple of them down there were affected. So I'm kind of doing some arborvitae surgery here today, but this one, unfortunately, is the only one, I guess fortunately, it's the only one that actually straight up died. But on to better things, we have our greens bed, which is looking really good. Let me prop this up here so I can get in and show you. If you guys are new here, you can see these are our A-frames that we made um, with hinged lids to keep squirrels out and hail out, and it works really well. So we can actually enjoy the crops we grow and eat them ourselves. So we have dwarf blue kale growing along here on either side. And then a bunch of Swiss chard. Um, this was the year that I decided to grow a lot of things from seed swaps and just kind of use up the seeds that I already had. Um, and I'm actually pleasantly surprised by you guys. You, you saved some good chard seeds, so good job. Um, I also have a random pink celery in there, um, and then some lettuce, lettuce babies that are starting to head up. Baby romaine also saved seed from a swap. Um, Lola Rosa leaf lettuce, I believe. Um, you can see there's a little mystery green one that definitely came from the same packet. Uh, yeah, so let's go over on this side. Put this down so the squirrels don't get inside. I'm going to be planting some more uh, peppermint Swiss chard on this side where the wood chips are, but I need to pull some of them back a bit. Hey, Tucker. Come here. Hey, buddy. You looking out for squirrels? Over here, we've got... Mm, beautiful, right? Um, we have... <laughs> two tomato beds, um, which are doing so well, and I'm really, really, really pleased with them because I started, or I, sorry, I planted these tomatoes out in the end of March this year, which if you grow here, or if, if you ask anybody who has gardened here for a while, they'd call me crazy for doing that, but with the addition, <clears throat> excuse me, of some plastic over the tops of these to create like a greenhouse effect um, we were able to extend the season by gosh like two months honestly because usually in an unprotected area you wouldn't plant out tomatoes or really anything around here until late March so this is really awesome you can see I've already got some flowers forming on mostly all of them and little tomatoes forming as well we also have what are supposed to be tangerine gem marigolds, but those don't look like the packet to me. They look, they're small, like I was hoping, but those, I don't know what happened. I like them anyway, but I don't know what happened. So these are all the indeterminate varieties. Um, I can make a list of all of them. They're all different. There's eight in here total. And you can see I put like a, a rebar mesh panel down the middle. It's about eight feet long. I think about four feet tall, um, 
just stuck it down the middle, put some stakes there to hold it in place, and I'm training the tomatoes to go up with one main leader um, and pruning them pretty regularly so that it promotes proper airflow and um, there's no disease that happens within there. So I am able to pretty intensively plant tomato beds. So we have eight indeterminate varieties in here, and then we have eight determinant varieties in here that are also doing really spectacularly. Check out all those flowers. Doing really well. Let's see. And here's some more real life blankets that I leave out here, honestly, because we never know when hailstorms are going to hit. So I can just run out and throw the blankets over the top and protect all my babies. So this bed um, is kind of the root crop bed. It's the first bed um, in the late winter that gets the most sunlight. And so it's the bed that I planted out things directly sown in here first. So we have a bunch of little radishes along rows there. This is also the bed that I planted the seed tape, the carrot seed tape, which unfortunately did not work. And I'm thinking it's because I planted it around that time that we had really bad roly polies. And so if you remember back, I posted about our roly poly trap um, so that they wouldn't eat all of our beet leaves. And so that has actually really helped. The beets are looking really good, but I think they just coincided um, with the carrot seed tape. So I'm going to try again because I'm determined for them to work. It's a really, really cool um, method. But you can see we've got some more radishes that are just about ready to be pulled. I planted some more in between that you can't see. Um, there's some non-carrot tape carrots that are growing right there. And we've got some more carrots going along here. I think these are the Lunar White from Baker Creek. They need to be thinned. Another reason why I want the carrot tape method to work because then I don't have to thin them and waste any seed. More radishes along each side. Another cute dog. Hi, Tucker. Hi. Oh, are you tired? Yeah. And then looking back this way, there's the chicken coop and our compost bins. We have a smaller, younger peach tree right here, and then a larger one over here. I'll show you the variety when we get closer. Um, and just kind of a hodgepodge of things down here right now. I haven't really solidified what I want to fill in this area with, but that's the fun of gardening. So we have calendula. My first year growing it, I'm really really loving it. It's so pretty. We have a couple of calendula plants hanging out getting ready to bloom. Um, garlic is planted around each peach tree. And then those marvelous green onions that are in bloom. I'm actually thinking of moving them once they're done blooming and I collect the seed heads um, to line this pathway. I think that would be really pretty. We have creeping thyme in between each pathway. It smells really good. Not as many bees out today, but it's kind of overcast and chilly. There's one. But we have plenty of squash that are getting ready to set fruit. If you guys can see if this focuses. Here we go. You can see the difference between a male and a female flower right here. So here's a female flower. You can see it has like a little miniature looking zucchini. Down here, this is a Claremore zucchini. And then underneath here, if I can get it without breaking, is a male flower that just got done blooming, but you can see it doesn't have that little like pretend fruit underneath. That's a good way to tell the difference. Um, some potatoes I'm excited about. Our compost bin. I'll go show you what we've got growing in the chicken coop since 
our chickens are not living here this year. So we have some things that I'm able to grow in here that are protected from hail and squirrels. So it's a kind of a great little, it's like a greenhouse without the warmth, I guess. I don't know. Um, we've got some melon. I think this is a Minnesota midget melon. It's been battling the roly polies, but looks like it's winning. Kajari melon. Looks like the sun's trying to come back out. We've got a couple of loofahs that are starting to make their climb. The hope is that all of these can climb up this hardware cloth. Another loofah. Another loofah. These are little icebox baby doll watermelons. Something of that nature is what they're called, but I'm going to attach some wire on this chicken perch so that they can grow up here and the melon can hang in the back. A couple cucamelons. And a couple of sunflowers right here too. I thought that'd be pretty. We'll go this way. Tucker leaves toys everywhere. All right, Tucker. <laughs> uh, let's see. The sun came out and the bees came out. We've got chamomile making an appearance down here and we have quite a few summer squash hanging around just because that's a really easy to grow and quick to mature food source and red mustard which the flea beetles are loving this year I've planted some radishes that I totally forgot to water as you can see um, I have one crawling on me right now um, but I planted some radishes around them to try and deter them from eating this we'll see if that works some borage hanging out there can't wait for that to bloom more summer squash I'm really excited about this It's from uh, David's garden seeds but look at this pattern on the leaf it's called a round bryce zucchini so it makes little globe shaped zucchinis but this pattern on the leaf is totally natural it's not diseased with powdery mildew like it looks that's just the way that the leaf looks i really like that um cheddar cauliflower my favorite signs love that my mom gave it to me and then you can see we still have some cloches that I made on some of the newer to the garden transplants, I guess you could say. Um, these are some peppers. I know this one's Oda pepper. This one is a mystery pepper. Don't know. A couple of sunflowers that will get giant to kind of fill in this space right here along this trellis. So two peppers, that's an eggplant, Turkish orange eggplant. And then on either side we have these beets, which are doing so well, especially now that we got the roly-poly situation under control. But look at their, if I can get you focused, they're heading up. These are all mystery beets, again, from Seed Swaps, so good job. And then this is where the rest of the sweet potato vines are going to go and fill up this space. Cucamelons are planted right here and right here to fill up this arch. Bush beans that survived the roly poly attack. And then, oh, look it. Here comes one. You can see what happens when I forget to cover up newly planted areas. The squirrels just create trenches and dig up these seeds, but yeah, they should be fine. Beans are pretty resilient. And Let's see, we got a sunflower corner. I could probably take this one off. It's looking really good. Yeah. These are from Lindy. These are just a giant 
sunflower seed that she saved from her own garden. So I'm excited to see what those look like. And then these little ones are kind of a dwarf. Um, they're called Sunspot from Gurney's Seed. They have a really large seed head, but they only get a few feet tall. And then the garlic patch is looking so good. I seriously can't wait to eat it. Like, I'm going to show you. These stalks are gigantic. Especially this one. Look how big. I mean, I, I have small hands, but that's going to be big garlic. There's some carrots planted there. Yeah, we got about 107 bulbs, I think, total of garlic planted last year. There's some more scapes. And then this is just the same on this side. More sunflowers and bush beans. Beets. Oh, check out our ladybug friend. Hello. Go eat all the bad bugs. Thank you. Um, these radishes all went to seed, which is kind of a bummer because it really didn't stay too hot for too long when I planted them, but they thought otherwise. So now I know purple radishes are not very heat tolerant, but I'm keeping them here so that, again, the flea beetles have something to eat that's not the things that I want to actually eat myself. Go this way. This is the raspberry patch. Got a couple different varieties in here. And we ignore all the weeds. Those are just there. A couple potatoes that I planted from the pantry. Pumpkin. And then this is just the ring around the tree where I planted a couple more squash and borage in my nasturtium forest. Looks like I left this here. That's cool. But look at these are looking really good. There's a bunch of different types in here that I don't even remember the names because I, of course, mislabeled all of them and then I lost the labels and then I mixed up the labels and so that's okay. It's just one big happy accident. And then, I'm not going to go over there because I haven't scooped dog poop yet, but we've got um, pole beans that are going to go up this trellis, and then peas are all along this fence. And there's the hammock. And there's that.